Hey folks, and welcome to another video from A Plain Truth. Well, let's just drill down a little bit more. Someone sent me a very, very good short compilation of how jet engines work that provide 90% of the thrust for jet engines to go. And this is from the uh, brilliant work of Anthony Haywood, showing how jet wings do not carry jet fuel. The information is overwhelming. Look at how thin those walls are carrying those big jet engines. But the piezo electronics here is what we're going to get into about how these plane wings do not hold fuel. Yes, there is used a little bit of fuel on the plane, and we'll get into that, to spark the compressors that are generated from the piezoelectronics uh, jet engines, Pratt & Whitney. They'll show you how it's done. But as you can see here, they don't hold 40,000 40, gallons of fuel. Think of a, a tender uh, tanker that comes in and fills up the gas stations where you go. That's at maximum maybe 4,000, 5,000 pounds. And you're telling them eight of them are on these wings? I don't think so. I don't think so at all. And here's just more documentation from the brilliant Anthony Haywood work. But take a look at this. This was a comment on the site here from Juan Flores. I'm a mechanical aircraft engineer from the Mexican Air Force. I'm in charge of the F-5 Tiger jet fleet. I will tell you the secret. The air is 73% of nitrogen. The compressor breaks the molecular force of oxygen and nitrogen of the air. And then as the nitrogen becomes the fuel for the combustion chamber, a free energy machine hidden to humanity, the fuel is only necessary to start up the compressor at high revolutions. Once in high revolutions, the fuel is the air that burns the nitrogen at high compressor, at high elevations. Once in higher revolutions, the fuel is the air that burns nitrogen at high temperature inside the combustion chamber started by the fuel at the beginning. At the beginning. This is the secret for high levels only. I could lose my job <clears throat> and life now. The ground crew and all the people involved does not see the truth because they keep feeding fuel to the airplane and they believe this is the only source of power. The pilots will not notice that because they see with their own eyes how their aircraft is charged with fuel, and in all the aircrafts there is a uh, power source. The pilots will notice because they see with their own eyes how the aircraft is charged with fuel. In all aircraft there is a clock of time flight which controls the indicators of fuel level. There is no pilot in the world that could try to see what happens if he ignores the fuel level indicator. This is my gift for humanity. So this is how they deceive the pilots. They do put a little bit of fuel in for the compressor to start it, as we'll see here in a second. So how do jet engines start their engines? All right. So how do they get them started? You can read there's many different ways, but the primary way here, folks, it says start, start carts are at every major airport. Air start unit. The so-called start cart is wheeled airport utility that can be carted to an aircraft. It provides high-pressure air to the engine, oh stop, to the engine to start it. Let's read that again. It provides high pressure air to the engine to start it. This helps save the battery from wear due to repeated use at every major airport. Got it? So how does the engine work? We're getting the video here in a sec. But here again, just to prove it, uh, the sucking sound, and it's like a hose nozzle, it's like a garden hose where it narrows and creates more pressure. It's all about the pressure. Here you see in most modern jet engines, most modern jet engines, the fan alone can generate up to 90% of the thrust, 90% of the power, the pushing, or pushing power of the engine. To find out where the other 10% comes, we must continue to follow the air on its journey. So it gets squeezed, just like starting bigger, going smaller. They're squeezing it down and using the piezoelectronic blades that create actually energy from their vibrations. When they start vibrating, they increase in intensity, and that's the piezoelectronics that makes the energy being created and more power behind it. So we are leaving pre-jet engine technology behind, and once the fan sucks in the air, some of it's not just forced around the engine, but is funneled to what's known as the compressor. Inside the air, compressor is pushed along by many spinning discs loaded with small blades along a tube that gets smaller and smaller. This quickly squeezes the air, making it much more dense, hotter, and more explosive when the fuel is finally added. Get it? 90% is all done by the compressors and the blades. Fuel is added to the compressed air, creating a highly volatile mix requiring a simple spark 
to burn. This is what happens in the combustion chamber up here, the combustion chamber where they do add fuel. Yes, there is fuel added, but not in the amounts they're saying. The way of the jet engine is at the end of another tube full of spinning disks bristling with blades that are spun by the force of the expanding gas. This part is known as the turbine. Once at the end of the turbine, the gases leave the engine, exerting a force on the engine in the opposite direction. This is why people say they smell gas coming out of the engines. The ingenious part of the modern engine is that the intake fan, compressor, combustion chamber, and turbine are linked by a single shaft running along the inside of the engine. So when the expanding gases spin the turbine at the back, it helps spin the fan at the front, which keeps the process going and generates more thrust, creating perpetual energy. Very, very, almost perpetual energy. All right, and this video will explain it some more. But remember what Flory said about the Mexican government. They do have the free energy devices on these higher-end crafts in the military. Tesla technology, 120 years young. Birds fly by pushing air. Mankind has made many things that push air. One of the greatest machines that push air is the jet engine. Jet engines suck air in the front and push a jet of air out the back. That force is called thrust, and it moves an airplane through the sky. Let's see how it works. A big fan at the front of the engine pulls air around the engine and sucks air into the core. We'll come back to that outside air in a moment. For now, let's follow the air in the core. It goes into a compressor, something like many household fans joined together. Each fan gets smaller and smaller as the blades squeeze the air into a tighter and tighter space, compressing the air like you would squeeze a balloon, until that squeezed air is mixed with jet fuel, a kind of super gasoline. In the combustor, that air and fuel mixture meets a flame and shoots out the back of the engine. The rush of hot air spins a turbine. The turbine is like a windmill that scoops up energy from the heated air and spins the shaft connected to the fan at the front of the engine. The excess hot air from the combustor blows out the back of the engine, producing thrust. Remember that air rushing outside the engine core? Together, the turbine and fan push a larger mass of air than the core ever can for much more thrust. But that extra air passing around the engine core works more efficiently if it moves more slowly than the hot air rushing out the combustor and the back of the engine. One of the first engine makers, Pratt & Whitney, recently designed a new jet engine that lets the fan push air more slowly than the turbine by putting an amazing gear between them. Pratt & Whitney calls this the pure power engine because it uses less fuel and makes more thrust at the same time. Less fuel saves money and cuts back on pollution, which is better for the environment and all living things. And when the fan moves slowly, the noise drops so much you can barely hear the airplane in the sky. It's a new design for jet engines and a new era for jet airplanes that we all can enjoy.